because she was being a bit sneaky and she was sitting in a place that wasn't easy to see her but we've managed to find her and we found her because we saw her tail dangling now can you see her there look as we go in she will start to be a lot easier to see there she is lying on top of the branch so she's lying in a place where it is quite tough to see her and if you can only really see her from one angle if you don't look carefully in the trees like this that you can drive right past leopards and not even know that they're there and that's what makes them so special is that they don't sort of just stand out they blend in very well so, London, you're wanting to know how a leopard climbs a tree. Well, London, what happens is it, it will go look to, at the tree, and so it'll walk up to the, the base of the tree, and it'll look up, and then it jumps with its back legs up, and its front legs are big and powerful, and they have lots of sharp claws, and so they'll stick their claws into the tree, and then they pull themselves up, and it's almost like they're using hooks to try and kind of keep them on the tree, and then they kind of just pull up, and they're very, very strong animals, and then their back legs will just help them as they go, and then they once they're in a tree, they'll try and find a branch like this that is quite flat and it means that they can then lie down and sleep very comfortably now the reason that she's sleeping in this position and why she's up there is probably because the hyenas are around so when there's hyenas in this area she has to be a little bit careful as we were talking about earlier because the hyenas are dangerous to her so she'll rather sleep in the tree and get away from the hyenas also she's going to have a situation where she's going to get a little bit more of a wind up there and the wind obviously helps to keep her nice and cool because well we were saying earlier it's a hot afternoon and so that makes it difficult for her. Ah, Brandon, you obviously are watching very closely because you want to know why she's breathing so fast. Well, the reason that she's breathing fast is because she's eaten too much, Brandon. And so what happens with a leopard is when they eat, they eat so much that it pushes up on their lungs and it means that they can only take a little bit of air. So normally, like us, let's say we have, we can breathe and we can take a normal breath. But then if somebody sits on your chest, Brandon, you know it's very difficult to then take any air in. It becomes hot harder because your lungs can't expand and can't grow bigger with the air that you're taking and it's the same with the leopard so when she eats too much all that meat that she's eaten pushes up on her lungs and it means she can only take small breaths and quicker breaths to try and get the oxygen she needs to be able to survive so it's a very it's a difficult time for a leopard but obviously the nutrients that she's getting is going to help her to survive so she just does that the other reason that she's breathing fast is because it's hot so when you're hot we sweat as people so I don't know if you've ever run around and you feel that you start to get that water on your skin with the leopard they can't do that so what they do is they breathe fast because the hot air that comes out of their mouth goes over their tongue and as it goes over it causes the saliva so the moist the, the wetness in the mouth to start to evaporate. Now evaporate basically means the water turns from a liquid into a gas like air. And so as that happens, it actually cools the blood down and the blood in the tongue and the mouth get cooler and it sends that cooler blood back into the body and that's how they keep themselves cool in the hot African temperatures. So it's a very clever thing to have and to be able to do. Vinales, you're wondering why leopards are so sneaky. Well, I don't know. I wish they wouldn't be so sneaky because they make our job quite hard sometimes. But the, the reason that they're so sneaky is actually that they are by themselves. So you have a situation where they're not like lions or even cheetah brothers that will spend time together in a pride or a coalition and they can use each other to kind of find food and all those kind of things. A leopard is a shy animal because it's, it's designed to try and s sort of stay hidden. When it hunts, it doesn't want to be seen by animals, so it has to be able to be in a thicket where it can camouflage, which means to hide away. And so it's a very good thing for it to be shy like that. Also, a leopard, because it spends all its life on its own, it doesn't like when there's attention on it. It doesn't like to be seen by other things. And so that's why it will try and hide and get into thick areas because it wants to be the in animal that's always hidden because that's how it's going to be able to find food. Now, she looks like she might get up. I'm hoping she's going to get up and come down the tree and then walk to the other tree because the other tree is a much nicer place for this leopard. I certainly think that we'll have a better view of her if she goes to the tree where the kill is in or the carcass or the little steenbok that is inside there. Oh, that's nice. Look, she's turned to face us. Look how beautiful she is. Isn't she just the most beautiful animal? 
So here you're wondering how a leopard will find its way back to the tree. Well, so here the leopard knows that it's put its carcass in the tree. So it's like, so here if you put your, I don't know, what's your favorite toy somewhere and you go and put it down, you know that you put it there. So you'll go and you'll, you'll go and do something else and then you'll come back and you'll be able to get it. So the leopard knows that that's where it's, it's, food is and it can also see it from where we are the tree is not very far it's about i would say maybe 100 meters or around that area from where the, the kill is and so it's easy for it to see where the kill is and that's how it will be able to find it very quickly right well i'm going to sit here with our leopard and because it is the most beautiful animal and my favorite animal and why wouldn't we want to we were trying to find it but while we sit and enjoy the view of the leopard let's send you back to ali and see what's happening with those buffalo and elephants well, we might as well enjoy the last few minutes of your drive with us with the most beautiful animal, like I say, in the whole of Africa. And you can see it's got its little white tip to its tail that's up at the moment. And so it's got a situation where it's turning that tip of the tail up because there's a bird that's shouting at it. So there's a type of bird called a rattling cysticula. And the cysticula is making lots of noise. I know cysticula is a hard word to say, but it's making lots of noise and shouting at the leopard. And so that's why the leopard curled its tail up like that to tell the cysticula, I'm not hunting you. Stop shouting at me and stop telling everybody I'm here. Now, Robbie, you want to know why the leopard has such a long tail? Well, it needs a long tail for when it's hunting and when it's climbing trees. Hunting and climbing trees allow it to be able to balance very nicely and so it has a situation where that as it goes up the tree because its weight is going to be moving so the tail moves a little bit as well and it causes it to get off balance and so the tail helps just to keep it in up the tree and from falling out and when it hunts when an animal runs and tries to turn so her tail will help her just keep her balance and turn with that prey animal when it's running so fast look at that she's so funny this cat <laughs> I think she doesn't feel like moving, but there's a few cars that are coming past and that's why every now and then she just pops her head up and makes a bit of a look around. Now, unfortunately, it is that time, as James and I have mentioned, where all of you are going to go back to work. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? She's decided to give you one last look because she knows that you guys are going to be heading off to do more schoolwork. And like I say, I hope that you don't get too much work today. I hope that it's a fun day at school and that you loved seeing all the animals in Africa and so from James and, and Ali and myself it's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us and I hope that we'll see you all again very soon and for the rest of our viewers well we're going to kick off our regular drive now and so while we kind of sit here with our leopard let's send you back across to Ali and the buffalo well Ali I am indeed and not and for a couple of reasons one because it's been so long since I've spent quality time with Shaduli this morning. We found her quite late in the drive and, and it was really nice to find her and see her up in the tree, but it wasn't really a quality kind of time that we got to spend with her. So it's really nice just to be here right in the start of the drive and to have a situation where we're going to be able to spend quite some time with her this afternoon, hopefully. Now, the other reason why it's really cool is because this female is a female that I have seen a few times when I was at Simbambili and I've watched her coming from her mom so the first time I ever saw her was when she was still with her mother and then watched her separate from her mother and start to move in and try and kind of move around Salehesh and Tiani and it was an interesting thing because Salehesh and Tiani well Salehesh as we know was a, a very big girl dominant and she kind of bossed the whole western sector and so this female had to worm her way through and I had the most incredible sighting of her and Tiani having a standoff in a marula tree one night the two of them chased each other up and there was just absolute chaos in the tree as they went about going after one another it was really quite something to kind of watch the two of them go at it it was it was amazing so it's been a long time since I've seen her and what I can tell you is that she's increased in size and bulk massively since I last saw her. She's looking really quite solid and set and so it's exciting to see her hanging around this area. The other side of this is that we kind of ask for a more kind of picturesque scene and I'll tell you why. I mean we've got a green beautiful wattle that she's sitting in and look at that when she just looks over at us. Is that not magical? And behind her is this rainy overcast dark cloud and it is as good as one could ever ask for she is looking as pretty as you could be and like i say the green and that dark kind of blue behind her is just phenomenal of course we are going to get a bit of rain because of that cloud it's kind of ghosting past us a little bit to the left there'll be a few drops that are going to fall on us in fact they're starting to fall now so it's going to be come with a little bit of a cost but i think that's absolutely 
pr- perfect to see a leopard like that. Of course, we could have had a bit of a cleaner background, but there's not much more we could have asked for. And I love the fact that she's kind of pinning the one branch down for us so that we can see her face quite nicely because if she lifted her one leg, that branch would definitely lift up and we'd have a situation where we wouldn't be able to see her nearly as well. Look at that. Hello, girl. Very pretty. Now, you might notice also above her left nostril, she seems to have a little scar there. And I wonder if that little scar has got something to do with the fact that she has been mating with Hukumuri. We know hukumuri has got one or two scars. I wonder if maybe she had, during that mating process, they got into a bit of a scrap. Sometimes it happens with the males and females as the male uh, removes himself from the female. So the barb on the end of his penis hurts her and then they kind of fight it out. And that's maybe why hukumuri has got a nice little cut under his left eye and she's got this cut on her nose because I haven't heard of any other... In- sort of altercations with leopards or any sort of fights that have taken place between her or Hukumuri with other individuals at the moment. Of course, there could very well be. Now, I think she's actually going to stand up. It's starting to rain, so I wouldn't be surprised if she decides that the rain is not for her and she goes and finds herself a little thicket, which won't be good for us because she is inside Simbambili and, and like I say, if she comes down, it's going to be a very tricky situation to be able to find her. What I am hoping, though, is that she heads back maybe closer towards her carcass and her kilt, but and let's see, it looks like she might get up. Are you going to move, girl? I hope not. Noriko, you're wondering if she sneezed earlier and can leopards sneeze? Yes, leopards can sneeze and she might have done so. I didn't notice it myself. It's not to say that she didn't. She could very well have sneezed earlier. I just didn't notice it and didn't see it for my own eyes. But they do sneeze. They get things up their nose and they try and eject it. So sometimes they'll get grass seeds, dust, a fly, um, various things, much like us. If there's things that tickle our nose, so we, you know, we end up also sneezing and trying to eject it out. And it's the same thing for a leopard but there is a lot of yawning going on and so i think that she's undecided as what she wants to do she kind of yawns and then pops her head down with much vigor and so i think she might start moving it's cool enough for her to go and feed it's not like it's too sort of hot for her to feed now now with a bit of rain falling it certainly should hopefully cool things off a little bit and she should be able to then get up and start kind of finishing off that carcass the problem is is that she's not going to come and drink on our side like i had hoped the two hyenas that we saw are, are wallowing in the area that i would have expected her to be able to Um, drink at and so we'll have a situation where I'm pretty sure she's going to end up kind of going deep into some Mambili once she finishes that kill. Time will tell and we'll just have to see how it goes but while we enjoy the view and see whether or not she gets up and moves I'm going to send you all the way back north to James who seems to be on a bit of a birding mission today and is busy looking at a beautiful hammercorp. Well, our leopard is coming down the tree, so she's decided enough is enough. I think the rain is sorting her out and trying to kind of push her down the tree. And there she goes. She's jumped down. And so hopefully she's going to walk towards us. Look, it looks like she might come towards the kill. Hopefully she is going to do that. Are you going to come to us, girl? Yes, come on. This is the way you must walk. Exactly the way you're coming. Well done. Did you get the message? Yes. So she seems as though she's going to walk between us Let's see, I need to just go back for her to come out here. So here we go, girl. You're welcome to come out this way. So I just wanted to reverse and give her a chance to be able to just get through this little gap because she's kind of wanting to come out onto the road and probably walk down towards her carcass. So I'm just going to give her a bit of space and allow her to be able to do that because ultimately we don't want to push her and get her into a situation where she's a bit nervous. But there she goes. How cool is this? So she's walking straight with purpose to the tree. I think we're going to get a very cool view of her hopefully going up the tree. You're going to just have moments of kind of bushes passing in front of her as she walks in this direction. It also seems to be a bit of rain that's coming straight for us. Oh, whoopsie, she's stopped now. So it seems as though we're going to get very wet as well, which is not ideal. (laughs) It's quite a bit of rain that's coming our way, and so we'll have to put some rain covers on just now. But for now, we're okay, I think. A little itch that she's just taking care of as well, making sure that she keeps everything kind of sorted out, make sure the neck is all sorted as well, and then off we go again. Debbie, you're wondering if the big cats hunt more with their eyes or their noses? Well, 
Debbie, it, it depends on the situation. I, they use their nose a lot, but I would say eyes more than anything else. If I had to sort of take a wild guess, is that their eyes were far more important to them than their noses are. In saying that, though, I've seen leopards with one eye that are absolutely fine when it comes to hunting. Now, I'm going to go past her a little bit because she's going to approach this tree and walk straight. Actually, there's a car in front of us, so we're going to just let them go through. But I'm pretty sure she's going to go up this tree, and if I go into the right place, we should be able to get her coming up quite nicely. Let's see. I'm going to go forward. So she is going straight towards the tree itself. And VM, I think if we go and park ourselves here, we're going to have a really nice view of what's going on. So somewhere... Oof, difficult, because she's going to go up behind a whole bunch of branches, I think. But we'll try and park where she should theoretically pop up and into the tree itself so you can see there are a few sort of branches there she goes look at that so she didn't waste any time <laughs> it was a little quicker than i thought she was going to go i thought she was going to kind of stop and look for a bit but she didn't waste any time whatsoever she just went straight up and straight into the tree itself which is pretty amazing now are you going to go and lie on this branch for us of course you are good girl well done isn't that spectacular just like we wanted girl you have done us a solid favor because you've lay in the most perfect spot for Viem and I we've parked ourselves in the most wonderful place and she's kind of looking straight at us the only problem is, is it's starting to rain quite heavily Kirst, so we are going to have to put some rain covers on fairly quickly to protect everything because it is starting to come down a lot harder than it was earlier so while we try and get our rain covers on I'm going to just send you back across to the Mara and to James, who hopefully is going to find some other lines that are not being harassed by hundreds of vehicles, as he says. I do have a landscape and a landscape. Okay, landscape. Why am I saying a landscape? That's very odd. Landscape and a leopard. There we go. I'll get it out eventually. So we do have Ingrid Dam or Shadulu female in the tree now, and she's just taking it very easy. She had a momentary visit from the two hyenas that were wallowing in the pan. They came in, saw her up in the tree, and then just decided, well, that's it. They're not going to worry too much, and they're going to just kind of move off. They can see that there's nothing that they can get into, and there's no way that they can actually get to the carcass, and so they kind of sniffed around for a bit and then off they went now she's not being as obliging as she could be because she's got her head facing the opposite way so hopefully she'll kind of put her head back the side and watch what's going on like i said the hyenas have kind of drifted off a little bit they're not really too interested in what's happening at this stage although you never know with hyenas they're always lurking about and that's exactly why those hyenas have been probably sitting here all day is in the hope that she goes up to feed and drops a bit of this carcass the thing is though is that those hyenas look a lot fuller than what she does so i wonder if maybe she had a little fight with them and kind of lost some of it to the hyenas and that's how she got to a situation where she ended up being able well having to kind of put half of it up in the tree and why she's not as full as you would expect her to be with the carcass Either way, though, she still looks in, in perfect condition and the hyenas themselves have now backed off and she's got it up in the tree, which is, makes it much easier for her to be able to actually feed and to get the nutrients she needs. But there's her paw just dangling down. Are you going to look? There we go. She's now looking outside, which is quite nice. Hello, girl. So she's watching all the cars. Unfortunately, we're on the main road that runs into the reserve. So we're just south of the entry gate um, and it can be a bit chaotic at times. There's just sort of cars that go up and down all the time particularly at this time of the day as you know people that have been doing dropping off guests for the day kind of arrive and sort of start leaving the reserve before the game drives start and then the game drives themselves start going and uh, yeah it just becomes a little bit chaotic so hopefully we're going to have a situation where everybody is going to start kind of getting in and out and stop moving around in this area because otherwise it's going to be all too much. There's going to be a lot of noise around her, which is not ideal. So I'm hoping that she's going to decide just to take it very easy where she is and the cars will all go and then we'll have a situation where we can at least enjoy her. Noriko, are you wondering if leopards only have one layer of fur? So, yes, they only have one layer of fur. They don't need more than that you can imagine when it is 
120 Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius, you don't exactly want two or three or four layers of fur in, on your body. You're going to have a situation where it's going to get far too hot and far too uncomfortable to have that much fur. So they only have the one layer. Oh, look at that. Something about a leopard when it's gazing and the kind of breeze is blowing in the background and the marula tree is just fluttering. And it's very, very cool to see. So she's watching the hyenas. That's what she's watching moving off back towards their mud wallow. But yeah, if they had more fur than that, it would become very uncomfortable and very difficult to survive in the hot weather like this. So only the one layer that they've got, if you kind of shave that off, then it goes to the bare skin. There's not a secondary or third layer that's inside there that keeps them warm or comforted in any way. The good news is it looks like the rain might leave us alone, so we might have dodged a massive bullet and not gotten too much rain in this area. It seems as though it's all kind of sort of subsiding a little bit and blowing off more to our south than it is actually onto us. The prediction is that we're supposed to get quite a bit of rain over the course of the weekend. We theoretically are supposed to get at least four or five days of, of good rain. Whether or not that materializes anyone's guess, but it, we need it for the area. Even though, you know, it's it's the middle of summer and we should have had a lot more rain by now and there, there is water in some of the dams, we need a lot more to be able to sustain this area for the winter months. And especially if we're going to have herds of buffalo like Ali saw in 700, they'll just mow this whole area. Kathy, you say you love their paws, especially the cubs' paws. Well, exactly. The cubs do have very cute paws, and particularly Tundi's little cubs. They're so big for the size of its body that they kind of look as though they're quite floppy. But when you see a leopard in a tree like this and you can see their paws just kind of dangling, it is always cool to see. It's just one of those, you know, surreal moments, really, where there's this massive cat sitting in a tree and its paws dangling from the branches. It's always is kind of one of those really cool things to see and you can actually see the difference now quite clearly between the two sets of paws so the front paws big bulky heavy set like that that's the front paw and the other ones are those much more slender and narrow and longer paws and if you were watching this morning you saw that we showed you a track of where a leopard had sat down and that's why it left that very elongated track is because you can see her paw that then runs up towards sort of her ankle joint and so that was the whole track that we saw that long narrow section on the sand itself which is not something that you see every day so very cool to see and obviously it's it's a nice study on the differences between the paws and why they need different paw sizes and a sort of difference between the back and front is all to do with the way that they go about business the back paws are there to help with jumping and to be able to help with you know chasing of animals whereas the front paws are all the power to pin animals down as well as to be able to climb trees and be able to get into trees effectively so you know they both design for their own use and it's important that they have these different size paws Wild Alan, you wanting to know what the name of this tree is? Well, this tree is called a marula tree. So it is the tree that all the elephants are standing under at the moment because of the fact that it is fruiting. And so because it's producing fruit, it means that a lot of the, you know, the elephants are coming towards it. Luckily for this female leopard, there's no fruit that I can see on this tree, which means the tree is not going to be shaken about by a big bull elephant while she's in it. And so she'll be able to kind of sleep quite peacefully. But look at that. Isn't that the most reclined she could be now i apologize for the aerial that's the hyena that's just come out behind us and is probably going to lie on the road yes it is it's going to lie in the cool sand and take it very easy it's, like i say the same hyenas that we had in the mud wallow but if anybody was watching during the school drive you'll know that there's a hyena at the moment that's got teats that are, are swollen which means that there are babies somewhere where those babies are i'm not quite sure so we're gonna have to just try and see if we can find them but while we kind of watch the beautiful shadulu gaze upon the eastern horizon i'm going to send you back across to ali and see what she's up to for the rest of the afternoon well our spotted cat is still resting easy taking it as chilled as it possibly can and enjoying the view i suppose when you can sit atop of the world like that and watch the hyenas down it's almost like a king looking down on the common people and just kind of almost having that laughing face as to say well sorry hyenas you can't get up here now the hyena that's here with us i'm going to try and move the vehicle a little bit for vian so he can actually show you while she's still relaxing there and while she's taking it easy because the hyena that we've got here seems to have a little problem with its backside which sounds really funny but it does seem to have an issue it's got what looks like a hemorrhoid that it's busy trying to sort out so it's kind of licking around that area which is a bit weird but so crystal you're saying this is Saka that's in the road 
here now Saka seems to have a bit of a problem like I say he's got some sort of issue there that you can see he's grooming it a little bit now a little squeamish if you I don't know if it's a cut is it a cut has he been bitten yes it looks like it or it's raw or whatever it is the tail area as well so poor Saka seems to not be in, having a nice time of it in that area so I apologize if that's a bit gruesome but like I say it is part of nature and unfortunately he's obviously not feeling that comfortable about it maybe it's why his bottom has been in water a lot because if you actually look his coat is very wet and this morning I'm pretty sure this is the same hyena that I saw this morning walking in front and he was also wet this morning and so interesting to see that they use water to try and just kind of ease the irritation now it's going to come and sit here I'm sure Shaduli is going to look around and just see what's going on there we go she's kind of having a little look about don't worry girl you're fine up there and she's seen this all before I wonder how many times she's had to deal with hyenas like this and see them kind of in the, from the top of a tree I'm sure it's many many times that she's had to watch what's going on now the hyena will probably just sit around here and just try and kind of figure out if there's any bits that have maybe dropped during the course of the day but from where that carcass is and the way it's positioned Shadulia has not fed on this carcass at all today she has not moved it when Senzo and I were here this morning that is exactly the same position the same way that the legs were dangling and had she fed on it it would have moved a little bit from where it was so she hasn't fed at all and I'm sure she'll only feed a little bit later in the day but you can see there's a bit of it and it does look old it's kind of got a black coloration to it which is generally a sign of age and then generally a not a very fresh carcass so the hyenas found something Kristen, you're wondering if mating was successful, when would she start showing? So she would start showing probably around now, given that she mated... Oh, no, maybe not, maybe a little early now. So she'll start normally showing, depending on the size of the litter as well. You know, with Tandy, she showed quite late because she only had the one. But if they have three of them, then they start to show a little bit earlier. But we normally start to see signs of it at around a month and a half to two months. That's when you start to notice that the, the belly is starting to drop a little bit. And not in the way when they full. When they full belly drops in a certain kind of way it's a round uniform shape but when they've got cubs it kind of almost gets like a little ridge in it and it drops much lower down towards the back legs than it would if it was a situation where she was just full so that's how you can normally tell when they are pregnant they also get a lot more kind of the teats get swollen and they start to obviously produce milk the closer they get and you can then really tell what's going on so I'm hoping she is pregnant it would be really nice if she is obviously she's if she is pregnant it would have been fathered by hook Murray as far as we know we don't know if she's mated with Anderson it's possible but given her behavior and the way that she's kind of come into this area and she's pushing further and further to the north east and into Juma it's a sign that maybe Hukumuri is the one that she's mated with the most because of the fact that she's moving around almost with him in a way to try and ensure that if she does give birth she's in the same place as him and is successful but look at how she's just watching what's going on we heard impalas shouting there a little bit earlier so there was one or two little snorts it sounded more like rutting than anything else but maybe she can see impalas look at how she's intrigued in something see how she's popped her neck out and she's really studying what's going on i don't know if it's maybe the hyena that's walking off into the distance we is it the hyena that's walked off there might be the hyena that's walked off because it seems as though she's kind of studying exactly that and just watching what's going on but there we go pour up and head on it and she's got beautiful colored eyes you can see she's got that kind of light bluish green color which a lot of the leopards from this south eastern section um, of of sort of the northern area so the up against the Londolosi Singita boundary a lot of them have this similar trait of bluish colored eyes right now I'm going to sit the whole afternoon probably and enjoy this and while we do that let's send you back across to James who apparently has got the bold and the beautiful that's probably reference to what he was talking about in terms of amber but let's go across to amber himself and see what he's up to well, James, I, it's just true. There is a major soap opera that's playing out at the moment, and it's a highly entertaining one, probably far more entertaining than The Bold and the Beautiful. Well, I'm not sure, actually. Maybe James loves The Bold and the Beautiful. I wouldn't be surprised. And it also seems as though James is on a naming spree today. I'm being called Christina, and there's many animals of the Maasai Mara that are just being named willy-nilly, and it really is, I'm sure, going to be quite confusing for those animals when they go back home tonight and just tell their friends, I've just been named something 
completely different to what they call them. So, James, I don't know. Did you check with all these animals since this morning you were chatting about talking to animals and, and all these things? So hopefully you checked with all of them that they like their new names and that they're not just offended by the fact that you're calling them Sydney and Amber and various others that you've done today. Although I did enjoy the James giraffe, which is probably my favorite one, the short giraffe of the Maasai Mara named James. I thought that was quite delightful and I did have a chuckle at that today. Now, our leopard is going to sit tight. I'm sure it's not going to move too much for too much longer. It's, it's probably in a situation where it's going to just kind of rest the whole evening up here. I was hoping that maybe her climbing up and making a bit of noise might have attracted the attention of Hukumuri, who's not, you know, too far away. He's at the end of the day is on one Eye Pan Road, which is just to our southwest at the moment. And so... I have a situation with maybe that I thought if she scaled, even though he's got a kill, sometimes male leopards can be a bit funny. They'll even leave their kill in a tree and then come and investigate what other leopards are around. And I thought maybe, just maybe, he might arrive. So you never know. Maybe he does. Also, all these buffalo that are not too far from us, you never know. Maybe they start coming over the road and the Inkahuma pride is following. So it's a good place to be. We're in a great sort of area for things to happen. And hopefully, like I say, we will get to see something. The rain seems to be coming back again, though. It's starting to get very very dark and very dingy quite quickly and it's going to be a surely at an early sunset so it's going to be a rather long period of darkness that we're going to be in tonight because remember that we have extended out a little bit towards seven o'clock so it's going to be a little darker tonight when we finish up but it's okay it'll be interesting nonetheless Right. Now, it is that time, though, that we are going to say goodbye to various platforms that have joined us this afternoon. I hope that you've had a wonderful time with us, and we hope to see you again shortly. If you are enjoying this far and you want to carry on watching what's going on with our female leopard, remember that you can just Google Safari Live, and you'll be able to carry on watching, because we are still out, as I mentioned, until 7 o'clock this evening. So there could be lots of interesting things. Ali's out and about looking for all kinds of things, and like they say, there's potential with the lions and with the buffalo that are around, and maybe they make an appearance. So hopefully Hopefully we'll see you again, but it's been an absolute pleasure and we'll leave you with one last view of the beautiful leopard in the tree. Right, so that's our various platforms off and so we're back to just the standard show, which means that all of you, I hope, are going to ask a lot of questions and keep us busy because Ali and I have got a stretch now to go, just the two of us. And while we gaze upon Shadulu and hope that she turns our way and the rain starts to fall harder, I'm going to send you across to Ali and see what she's up to. And like I say, hopefully she's going to get a bit of luck. She seems to have been lucky the whole week, so I'm sure something will come her way. Not to see anything, so let's go back and see. Hopefully I'm not going to reverse into anything because I can't actually see anything. Hi guys, so just, can I go? Go, 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 there we go. Right, so, more. So, sorry Chris, the rain is so hard, I can't hear you. And so I'm trying to reverse more. That's good, okay, VM, so VM says that's good. So, Penny Pine, you say we'll need hot chicken soup when we return home? Well, I think so. I think we'll have a situation where we're going to need a bit of uh, hot chocolate and something warm just to get everything going. You can hear I'm actually trying to shout because of how much it's raining. It's really coming down. And so, at least now that we're static, it's actually not too bad. The whole of the car is staying quite dry, which is good news. We've got everything sorted. You can see the rain falling in front of Shadulu. She's busy feeding. The buffalo should shortly start making an appearance. They're going to come out onto the road underneath her. And so we're in a prime position. I think actually, Kirst, you should tell Ali just to stay put at camp for no point in coming out. I'm quite happy to carry on by myself in the rain because, well, if there's not a sighting, she's just going to get the whole car wet for no reason whatsoever. So I'm quite happy just to stay by myself out in the rain. We've got at least something to look at. And while the rain is falling as hard as it is, it doesn't really make sense for somebody to be driving around. That's for sure. But Shadulu, I'm surprised that she's feeding now in the in the sort of heaving rain. I would have thought there would have been a situation where she was going to try and rather kind of feed when it was dry and get up there and kind of eat and then only go and find shelter when it rains. But she's decided it's time for a good 
feed now and I suppose she's underneath as much cover as she possibly can be and so it's going to be perfect for her to have a good sort of feed and rest but there you go you see she's just looking at us a bit of a shake getting all the water off making sure that she's nice and clean well done girl there's not much meat left there though I think she'll be finished by the morning though she might still be around tomorrow morning, but I don't think she'll have too much left of it. And now here come the buffalo. So they're slowly but surely coming out now. They're going to hopefully be visible. Can you see them there, Vian? I'll move my flap a little bit for you. There we go. There's the flap being moved. So there come the buffalo in the pouring rain. You can see the gate just in the distance there. So that's the gate in the background. That's the entrance to the Sabi Sand. So it's all taking place very, very close to that area. And the reason why it does that is because why the animals come past this gate system is because this is the thoroughfare for the Manuleti and the Sabi Sand. So that's the crossing point for a lot of these animals and that's how they get round from the Manuleti to here. And so it kind of is almost like a choke off system. Sorry, Vian, I'm trying to hold this cover away from you so that you can see all these buffalo coming through. But they will all come out onto the road and into the front and it will be quite nice. They'll be under the tree with her and the rain hopefully will subside a little bit as well because it really is pounding down at the moment. It sounds like it's lessening somewhat so hopefully we'll have a situation where it kind of eases off and it becomes a lot better to deal with. Now I just had the most awkward experience because the rain cover has obviously got water dripping off it and I wasn't paying attention and I just moved it onto my shoe and all the water just went dribbling down the sides of my shoe and onto my sock so now I have a wet sock which is a little bit weird but anyway it will be okay. I'll survive. A bit of water didn't hurt anybody. I'm not an effervescent tablet. I certainly won't dissolve in the water, that's for sure. But very cool that we can at least sit here in the rain and watch all of this unfold. It's, you know, one thing to have a leopard in a tree, but in the pouring rain and now the buffalo coming is just pretty special, if you ask me. I think it's very cool to see. So there they all come down the road. Cursed, I've lost you again. I don't know what's going on with my earpiece. It's causing havoc this afternoon. So I believe a lot of you are saying that you're enjoying seeing the rain. Well, I'm sure you are. It's, it's very welcome, that's for sure. And if we're going to get rain like this over the next five days, that certainly will fill things up and make things a lot better and certainly will make a lot of these animals a lot happier as well as even us because as we know it really is quite horrifically dry at the moment and it's going to be a horrible situation to kind of deal with if it continued like this if we had carried on with weather like this we would have had rather poor grasses and water for the winter time which would have meant a lot of the animals would have really suffered to be able to feed and actually get what they need to survive so I'm glad that the animals are at least getting some semblance of water and are at least getting hopefully some growth of grass and various other things that they need in order to survive but how cool is this just to have the buffalo with the leopard like I say we don't really actually even have to move we have a situation where everything is kind of just happening right in front of us which is quite nice I wonder if she's going to respond to the buffalo. She doesn't really seem too perturbed by it. She's kind of just sitting watching them come along and she's not really too stressed by the fact that there's a whole massive herd of buffalo that's approaching where she's got to kill. She's kind of just sitting here and taking it very easy at the moment and just enjoying the fact that she's got a nice meal. That's for sure. So if I was her, I suppose I'd be very much the same. I'd also be just sitting enjoying my meal and the rain there's not really much else you can do at the end of the day you just got to kind of enjoy that you have something at least to keep you kind of warm and a bit of shelter when it comes to the tree itself now i wonder if my earpiece is playing up again it seems to be sorry cursed i know that you're trying to get hold of me but this earpiece is driving me absolutely batty this afternoon Okay, Curse, let's try again. I'm going to try and not move too much because it seems as though every time I move, this is what happens.
Tony, you're wondering if a leopard can catch a common cold. So no, not, not really. People are unfortunately more susceptible to these things because we have been taking medication for quite some time and that's led to a situation where we've weakened our immune system somewhat. If buffalo could catch, or I mean, sorry, leopards could catch common colds, it would be a very difficult thing for them to survive. They're out in the elements all the time. There's no one that's going to help them get better. And so it makes life really quite difficult for them. So no, they will try and avoid... You know, well, they will, the immune system will be able to deal with the common cold and they'll be able to survive just fine. What they do suffer from, though, is TB. They can get TB, which is obviously affects their resp respiratory system. So that's something that they do get. It's generally only when they're much older individuals and they're suffering from a few other things does that become a bit of a problem. But this female is in prime health. She's in the prime of her life as well. She's now just approaching four years old, and so, you know, she's got only lots of years ahead of her, hopefully, if she doesn't get, obviously, caught by any predators or anything like that. But, you know, she's still got a long time to go, and she'll be as healthy as possible. Right, so, apparently, Ali didn't heed my advice and stay back at camp. She decided she wanted to brave the weather, and, well, I'm not sure that's the brightest idea, but anyway, we'll send you across to her and see what she thinks about this deluge that is coming down.